Yes, it is. If I got a minute to preach, well, I wanna, uh, I, I'm going to get up from here and go put on some dry clothes and carry myself home and get in the bed and get warm. <laughs> but before I go, I'm a Greensboro, North Carolina child. I was born here, raised here, grew up eating red dirt and sugar. Right here. Grew up priming to rap. Grew up training horses. Grew up slopping hogs, getting milk. All kinds of good southern living. North Carolina, for me, is a place that is unmatched anywhere in the world. And I tried to travel the world to make sure, because I left here 17, and I promised God and several dependable people that if I could get myself out of here, I would never come back. But it didn't work. And I wound up traveling all over the world. I stood in places. I was in Prague in the Czech Republic, sitting on top of a condo, two doors down from where uh, Havel and company sat in a bar and planned the revolution. And I'm sitting up there in this, this, this condo upstairs, and this apparition appeared in the clouds. And all of us, there were a lot of people sitting up there, and we all looked up. And all of the folks from Prague began to tell me, this is a special place. We have things like that that happen here because Prague is a place that God looks down upon. And he sends his angels on occasion to check on us to make sure that things are fine in the city of Prague. Because the word Prague means gate. So I'm sitting there and I'm listening to these people from the Czech Republic talk about how fabulous their home is. And I'm sitting there my cold beer in my hand eating that terrible Czech food. If you go to, if you, some of y'all know, some of y'all been there. They, they ain't got no salt and pepper over there, honey. No hot sauce nowhere. You can, you, 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 you got, you got to go get you some, you know, you, you got to go something else. Go eat Chinese or something. But don't, that, that Czech cooking, I don't want to offend anybody that's got Czech heritage. I'm sorry, but y'all need to <laughs> get some hot sauce over there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking everything they're saying about Prague I have said more than once about my home in Greensboro Amen. and I want you to know that I have bet my life and I may not have much of it to live and I'm getting older and I, you know, I'm, I may even stop entertaining because I'm getting too old to play with people anymore no, you're not. I'm getting too old to sit up and have fun when we have stuff going on yes. in my home like we have now. There are days when I don't want to sing no more. There are days when I'm not filled with joy. Because if I were younger, I'd go start some shit somewhere. <laughs> I'm just not young enough to do it. And I have finally decided to sit down somewhere and try my best to let younger people take the lead. But the younger people have no idea what to do because we didn't teach them. We didn't tell them where, who, when, what, or how. But in this place, now, California, I don't know who's from California. New York, I don't know who's from New York. Chicago, they got fine institutions in all them cities. The University of Chicago is considered one of the finest theological institutions in the entire world. California, everybody wants to be in California. Oh. They got summertime all year round. <laughs> New York City, oh, the city's so nice they named it twice. But none of those folk will do anything at any point to change what's going on in this nation because they never did. It was never California. It was never Chicago. It was never New York. It's always been in this little tiny town that critical Catalytic moments in American history have had their beginning. Right here, this little tiny, no-ass town has started more stuff on the global scene than anywhere else. And in my lifetime, I have been here to witness that. And I'm getting ready to walk out the back door. I'm 
I'm writing something called Gone Out Heaven's Back Door. And I don't want to leave here before I see that it ain't true. I wrote it thinking it ain't true. We have gone, literally, we have gone out heaven's back door. What we did here in North Carolina and what we did here in the United States must have made God smile in the 1960s when he looked down and said, look at them people marching. They're talking about freedom. They're talking about justice and right. Up. You know, he knew that there's some troubles, but he smiled the whole time. And then we got absolutely as ignorant. I don't know when it happened. My guess is when they decided to vote Ronald Reagan in president, but some of y'all might have voted for him, so I'm not going to get down that highway. <laughs> but we have decided, ladies and gentlemen, to be adolescent in American culture. And we can't afford that. We are young. We're the youngest nation on the face of the earth. And I don't care if you're Democratic, I don't care if you're Republican, American culture and the political machinery in particular is a conservative airplane with two right wings. <laughs> this nation has never had the nerve to stand up and be what all those creeds say we are. And nobody has challenged us. Nobody has challenged the madness that we now walk around. You remember when we used to watch Archie Bunker and laugh because Archie Bunker was so ludicrous? We laughed because Archie Bunker was it was, it was satire, and we laughed. Do you know Archie's ass is now running the country? <laughs> the shit we laughed at thinking it was highly impossible 30 years ago is now primary politics in American culture. And it's simply because we are too adolescent to stand up and be the people that Western culture designed us to be. White people, I'm on y'all side. I have followed white men in the more places. You wouldn't believe the holes, the, the places I've gone into. Trying my best, I mean, I'm an uh, ex-Marine. I have followed old white men into some serious hell and holes. I came home and drove a fire truck for 10 years, following old white men, having them tell me, Misha, go get that. All right, boss. I got a lot of shit invested in y'all. I didn't sit around here for 60 years to see y'all give up and just say, oh, the hell with it. We're not going to be America no more. Because what's happening now, people have decided they weren't going to be America no more. Once, once somebody else got all they thought was America, they didn't want nobody else to have none. Bullshit. Then we don't call it America for nothing. So don't stop. Because world culture is looking for you. And I got too much invested in it. I've raised more young white men you shake a stick at. I have. I've raised a ton of them. Not to mention the black ones I've raised and drug all across the United States. Here we go. So, Greensboro people, you, not Boston people, not California people, go home and talk to your wife. Go call your pastor. Cause something he's saying to you on Sunday morning, the shit ain't flying. Jesus said, on earth as it is in heaven. On earth. Greensboro people, I solicit you. I'm not going to leave here and make a sermon to people in California. I don't know nothing about the people. But I know y'all. I've been around Brother David since we were 17 years old. That man will fight a battle with a switch for justice and freedom and righteousness. I've seen him do it for me. Know he'll do it. All of you. Brother Lassiter, all of you. So, come on. Let's go get it. And if they don't do it in California, oh. if they don't do it in Boston, You know we got to find a way to 
more time for Mr. Lorenzo Meacham. Thank y'all so much for coming out and supporting the good man. Raise him up. Go get him up. Take care of the run. All right, thank you so much. Drive safely going on. Thank you. We're the house of dudes. We'll drive out. Thank you.